morning, so I'm not going to spend my time on you. Um, I want to first thank you all for inviting me to come and speak. It's an honor. I love speaking. I've been doing it since 2008, so I'm comfortable with it. <laughs> um, start out, I got married August 4, 2007. Got married to a guy that I had known since September of 2003. <clears throat> we had been friends from the time we met up until the end of 2005 when we decided we wanted to start dating. We started dating and by the end of 2006, we decided we wanted to get married. We didn't do, there was no down on one knee, will you marry me? It was kind of just like a mutual thing. We had known each other so long, you know, I assumed that I knew everything about him as well as, you know, he knew everything about, well, I knew he knew everything about me because I'm always open with myself. And so, like I said, we got married August 4th, 2007. And I found out the end of October that I was pregnant. So, of course, when you get pregnant, you notify your doctor, you go and you get prenatal labs. So I went in to get my prenatal labs and this was probably like the first or second week of November. By the third week of November, I had to go back to the doctor. It was the day before Thanksgiving, November 21st, 2007. I went in for being dehydrated. The doctor came in, she's like, well, can we ask your husband to step out of the room? I'm like, okay, sure. Because I know a lot of things they want to keep confidential between, you know, patient and doctor. So uh, he steps out. She comes in and she says, well, got your labs back. And everything's okay with your labs except one thing. And I'm thinking she's going to tell me that, you know, it's my gestational diabetes because I do have an older daughter. And with her, I did have diabetes while I was pregnant. So I'm thinking this is the issue. I'm like, okay, she's going to tell me something I already know. So she looks at me and she says, you're HIV positive. And I just, I looked at the wall. And I tell everybody this all the time. I, every time I speak about it and I think about it, I can physically, visually see the color of the paint on the wall. I can smell the smell in the room on that very same day. Like it, was hap like it just happened. And so she said, well, can we bring your husband back in the room? I said, oh yeah, let's bring him back in because if, if you're telling me I'm HIV positive, then he's the reason why. So we bring him back into the room. She tells him. When she tells him, the look on his face is not a look as if, you know, worry or concern. The look on his face is as if, wow, she found out. So we leave the doctors on that day. We get in the car. By then, I had not said one word to him. My lips did not part. We get in the car, and he looks over at me. I'm in the passenger seat because I can't drive. And he says, are you okay? And I'm like, what do you mean am I okay? He was like, well, don't tell anybody. I'm like, what do you mean don't tell anybody? We'll get through this. We'll work this out. Just don't tell anybody. And of course, being that I was still in my initial shock, I was numb, I had no emotion. We went back home. My, my mom was there, my aunt was there, because it was the day before Thanksgiving, and they were spending Thanksgiving with us. And we were at the time living in Spotboro, South Carolina. So I went in the room, closed the door, did not want to talk to anyone. So my mother was under the impression, oh, she's just sick because she's nauseous, dehydrated, and all this stuff. So I still had another appointment to go to that following week. Went to that appointment that following week. Found out that I was not only pregnant with one child, but I was pregnant with twins. So by that time, my emotions were stern. I probably went through every emotion in, in the dictionary. And I went to work. I was working a third shift job. Driving to work that night, I literally broke down. Because I, I had still not told anybody. So I broke down while I was driving to the point where I had to pull over. Because I couldn't see. I was crying just that much. So once I got myself together and I got to my job and I parked in the parking lot, I called my mom. 
And here I am on the phone crying, hysterical, can't get my words out. My mom's like, what's wrong? She's thinking I'm hurt in an accident or something. And I just had to get myself together and I had to tell her. Then I had to go through crying all over again because, of course, she broke down. She started crying. <laughs> she didn't know what to say. You know, I'm the baby girl. So she didn't know what to say to her daughter. And so once we got everything together, she asked me, well, what are you going to do? At the time, I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew that the way I was feeling at that moment, I did not want to be around her. So being that it was December by then, I packed up, you know, belongings. And I, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, so I went to Jacksonville, stayed there the whole month of December. I decided, okay, I know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go back to Spartanburg, South Carolina. I'm going to pack up every single thing I own. Whatever I came into this marriage and this relationship with is coming back with me. So on December 27th, after Christmas, I went back, got all of my belongings, and I left. But I couldn't just, you know, pick up and leave. So I had to, I didn't want him to know I was leaving because I didn't want him to try to get me to stay. So what I did was he had to go back to work New Year's Day. So I called my friend, I called one of my cousins who I had met for the first time when I moved there. Let them know what happened. Had to, of course, endure more crying from people. And once I got through that, I packed up everything. Whatever would not fit in my car, I left it at my friend's house to go back and get later. But a couple of days, I want to say it was probably the 29th of December, we were riding in a car. This is when I knew that I could not stay another day. Because I really probably wasn't going to leave on New Year's Day. But I was at a rage point. I don't know if anybody's ever been to a point of rage. But I was to the point of rage where we're riding in the car. Now picture me. I'm driving. He's in the passenger seat. And I just burst out laughing. You know, like, <laughs> you know, just a, a loud laugh. And he's looking over me like, well, what's so funny? He's looking around thinking I'm seeing something. I was like... I just thought of a new way to kill you today. <laughs> and I mean, when I got to that point, I knew it was time to get out. So once I got back to Jacksonville, I was at my mom's house, and I got a phone call, a real urgent call from my aunt. She was like, hurry up, turn on the news, turn on the news. I'm like, okay, what's on the news? So I turned the news on, and there was an incident with a homosexual couple. The older guy knowingly infected the younger guy, and he was sentenced to a maximum of five years in prison for a felony crime of knowingly infecting someone else with HIV, which in the state of Florida is the maximum sentence of five years for that crime, as long as, as well as any other STD. If you knowingly have it and you don't disclose it and you spread it, it's a felony crime. So I immediately called the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office and spoke with the detective in the sex crimes unit. I said, hey, I just saw this on the news. This just happened to me. What do I need to do? He said, well, file a police report. So I found an officer that I, was, that I personally knew and I was comfortable with, because at this time still nobody knows my status, but close family. So I fill out the police report. He said, okay, well, Give us a few minutes to gather the information, and we'll call you. I got a phone call on Valentine's Day of 2008. They're saying, we have everything we need. We just need something solid. Do you think you could get a recorded confession? So I asked him, I said, okay, well, what questions do you need me to ask him? I wrote all the questions down. Now he's asking me, how are you going to get the answer to these questions? Because... I had been trying to get these answers from day one. I would ask him, you know, when did you know you were infected? Do you know who infected you? Why you didn't tell me? You know, questions that somebody who's had something done and you know, wants to know, he would not tell me. But by this point, he's begging me to come home. He's asking me, please come home, please come back. We can work this out, we can do this and that. And I'm just to the point where I'm like, I don't want to do that. But I know if I want these answers, I have to play the role. So, I call him, had to call a couple times to wake him up, 
And once I got them up, I let them know, okay, well, I kind of just played it off as if, like, I need to call you right back. So that I can know that he's up, get a detective on the phone. We did a three-way. And I let the detective know. I said, hey, I'm getting ready to do this three-way. So when I click back over, record. So I do the three-way conversation. He answered every single question that I asked. Gave me every single answer. So when that was done, all right, love you, bye. <laughs> Hung the phone up, click back over. You got it? The test like, yeah, I got it. So within probably a couple weeks, they had issued a nationwide warrant for his arrest. Being that he was in South Carolina and I filed my charges in Florida, which I was able to actually file charges in Florida and South Carolina being that we got married and our first <coughs> unprotected sexual encounter was our wedding night and that we also lived in South Carolina. But because of double jeopardy in the legal system, it was again, it was basically what state was going to prosecute first. South Carolina had a maximum of 10 years with a $5,000 fine. Florida had a maximum of five years. Unfortunately, Florida <coughs> went first. They extradited him, they brought him back to Jacksonville. Once he knew we had a recorded confession, he ultimately pled guilty because at first he wanted to try to say, oh, well, she gave this to me. But because we had this recorded confession, he could not deny, you know, that he knew he had it and didn't disclose it to me. And I knew I didn't have it because I had just had testing done the end of 06 all the way down to my bone marrow because I, was, I had parvovirus, which is something different babies. Um, but I had that, so I knew that I had not been infected before then. And I could, at that point, I could count on one hand the amount of people I had ever had sex with. At that time, I was 24, so in my 24 years of life, I already knew how many people I had sex with on one hand. So I'm like, okay, you want to play that game? So once he pled guilty, there was no trial, none of that, sentencing hearing. I get in the sentencing hearing. I had not seen him since I left. So this was my awkward moment. I walk into this courtroom, he's sitting over on the side. And I just, I didn't feel anything. You know, usually if you have some, you know, have love for somebody for so long and you, you know, you see them after, you know, haven't seen them for a long time, you get these emotions, I didn't have any of that. None whatsoever. His mother was there. Now the thing with his mom, <laughs> his mom has this whole big story of how she told me. <coughs> now this is what she told me. You don't know my son like I know my son. Okay, so what, your son doesn't take care of his other kids, your son is abusive, your son is what? That's, that's not telling me anything. You're not telling me your son's HIV positive. You know, as much as I wanted to fault her, because I already knew that it was not her obligation, I couldn't really be mad at her. So, to this day, I'm not mad at her, I'm just disappointed in her as a mother, you know, because, I mean, if it was my child, I wouldn't care if I would be risking myself going to jail, I know I'd be saving somebody else's life if I know my child isn't telling what she was told. So she's in the courtroom, once they sentence him, she jumps up, oh, you're a liar, you're this and you're that. Judge was like, ma'am, do you wanna go to jail? <laughs> so after all that ordeal, um, I decided, okay, I'm still married to this man. So while he was incarcerated, I did decide, I did file for a divorce while he was incarcerated. I had to completely disconnect myself from everything that had to do with this man. And I did that. The only connection I had to this man are two children who ended up being born four months premature because of the stress. They were born, they were due to be born July of 08. They came March of 08. They just turned five on the 22nd. And being that they were born with disabilities, um, well being born four months early, they both have disabilities. One is a little more severe than the other. Um, that's one of my biggest, I think 
if I had not been pregnant, I probably wouldn't have known until I, that following year because I do get tested. You know, I was working in the medical field, so that was something I did anyway. So I wouldn't have known as soon as I found out. And to just real, you know, for it happening to me, I never thought about it before. Okay, you think when you get married, you're in this committed relationship, which is a marriage. It's monogamous. It's not, you know, I'm married to this person, I'm going to sleep with this person. You don't think of that. So for it to happen while I'm married, I'm committing myself to this person was just the most surreal thing that I probably ever dealt with. So that's why I go around and I tell my story because people think, oh, I'm married, it can't happen. And like they were saying, you know, even though you're married, still go and get tested. Because I'm a, I'm not gonna say I'm the number one example, but I'm up there of incidents where it can't happen while you're married. So like they said, even if you're in here and you're married, still gonna get tested. Cause you just never know. You can't, I mean, people who don't know me see me on the street, you will never know that I'm HIV positive. Like most people in here, you will never know. And it has no face at all. So that's why they, we all are stressing the importance of getting tested, knowing your status, because that's going to save a lot of lives in the future. We're Like the campaign they have now, we're trying to get the number to zero of newly infected. So if we can keep that to zero, then we're going to have, our kids that are coming up are going to have a bright future because if we can keep them from having to deal with and go through what we're going through, it's going to make a big difference. So.